Cristo, ya nos habíamos conocido la semana pasada. Vamos a iniciar entonces el día de hoy con lo que es la sesión 2 de Teaching English Skills, ¿ok? So. Ok. I am going to show you today the second part that we are going to work, ¿ok? Today we are going to work with teaching and speaking especially. Last class. Do you remember what we worked last class? Which of the skills we worked? Listening, right? Teaching, listening. Very good. Today, we are going to work with teaching speaking. Very good. Thank you. Yes, listening. We started with listening. Now, we are going to see what speaking is. How do we teach it? How is good to teach it? speaking and how are we going to develop this in the best way okay so let's let's start with this i am going to download the chat and welcome to your class okay so the first class we were talking about the importance of the skills the teaching skills right and how important it was to know how to teach each of them using los, las capacidades, los desempeños, but also using all kind of tools that we have, we English teacher have at our hands to know how to teach these things. So, for example, do you think students are good at speaking? We are talking about your schools, your institutes, wherever you're working. Do you think that your students are good at speaking? I want to I want to read you in the chat. It's a yes or it's a no. Do you think that your students are good at speaking? They are, but they are afraid to make mistakes. Okay, so so difficult. No, no, because not the one. Okay, no, very good. No, I think they're in process. Very good. They are learning. That's true. We are all learning. Remember that we all learn every day. I learn from you, you learn from me. Shy to speak, more or less, very good. Yes, so, so, no, excellent. So this happens a lot with speaking, especially with speaking. You know why? Because people is afraid of speaking. Because they don't know if they're going to say something wrong and somebody is going to be embarrassed or they are going to be embarrassed. Someone is going to make a joke about it. That's why they don't want to speak. They are embarrassed. And this happens a lot, especially with adults. Young learners are less afraid of talking and speaking than adults. Adults are more embarrassed of talking. Hello, Milagros, how are you? Yes. And actually, that's what we need to go through. We need to convince them that they are not going to be in a bad situation that or a difficult situation to them that is going to be the environment. Remember that we talk about the environment and how important it is that we create a trustable environment for our students. Not only adults, young learners, everybody that is going to learn, every learner needs a trustable environment when making a mistake is not something that it's bad. So right now we are going to talk how to create this environment, especially when we're working with speaking, okay? So then we're going to watch a couple of pages that are going to allow you to work these kind of things. And also we're going to have a little activity on the classroom at the end of the class. Remember, please, that it's important for you to do the activities on the classroom. If not, you're not going to be able to get your certificate, okay? Also, the link for the attendance is going to be passed at the end of the class, okay? Through the chat and also through the WhatsApp, the group WhatsApp. Okay, so let's continue with this, okay? Now, what do you think that your students are not good at speaking? What do you think they can improve? Improve. What do you think that they can do better or that you can do better to make them improve 
because they are learning, they are in a process. How can, how can we help them to improve this? Translate, okay, what else can we do to make them more confident about speaking? They are afraid of making mistakes. Yes, that's true. That's the main reason, actually. But we have also different reasons. To set a, a mood, very good. They are afraid. Excellent. Because it's because Spanish is around. Remember, we struggle a lot with the mother tongue, okay? Mother language is always there. It's everywhere. So we need to still struggle with these things. We struggle a lot with translation because they get used to translation and translation is not the best way of learning English. Remember this, the less you speak in Spanish, the faster they are going to learn how to speak in English. They feel nervous because, yes, very good. They feel nervous the Spanish is around. Speak even if he or she makes mistakes. Yes, they need to speak. We need to make them speak in some way or another. We need to make them trust on themselves so they can or they are going to be able to learn and to speak if they speak they are going to learn it's easy for them if they are speaking teaching songs very good because they're shy don't interrupt them and create a warm context this is very important even if we are giving feedback the feedback needs to be focused in the positive way that they can or they are going to be able to correct the situation, not the bad things. To practice, very good, excellent. Yes, that's true. Yeah, it is different. It's very different than the first language. I know, we all know. And we struggle with this since we, we, since we teach English. We are struggle with mother language. We struggle with translation. We struggle with Spanish in our classes. We struggle with a lot, a lot of things. So we need to create this environment. Remember the last class. We are English. We need to be English all the time. In the break, if we cross in the street, if we cross in a mall, if they ask for a question, if they need an advice, we need to be English. I know that it's not easy. And most of the time, a lot of us want to get to our students. And we think that the way of getting to them is talking to them in a language that they are going to fully understand. And in this case, living in Peru, it is Spanish. So the idea that we have that they are going to understand better it's true, they are going to understand better, but the thing is they are going to get used to us speaking Spanish. They are not going to have the need of speaking in English. If you don't have the need to do something, you are not going to do it. That's the problem. That's the issue. We need to be convinced that they can understand what we're saying in English. Even if we need to help with mimics, realia, pointing, or whatever we want, we, ha we have to do for them to understand. But using Spanish is something that is going to slow their learning and slow our teaching. Okay, look at this. Factors that we need to have like like be aware when we are speaking or we are when we are teaching english skills especially speaking we need to have the students motivated if they are not motivated they are not going to learn we already passed through this bad emotions negative emotions attached to a situation you are not going to want to repeat it so we need to convince them we need to motivate them and create an environment a trustable environment where they enjoy their learning. If they enjoy their learning, they are going to be more likable to learn or to pay attention than if, if we create an environment where they are not motivated or they don't feel that we are giving them something that they want or they are going to be useful for them. Again, we, we spoke about this last week. If you don't believe that I can give you something that you don't have right now, will you be here? No, you wouldn't. 
if you believe that you have everything that I can give you, you wouldn't be paying attention to this class. It is the same to, all, to our students. If they don't feel that you are giving them something that they are going to be able to use, you are not going to get their attention, not at all. So the classroom handicaps. We need to have helps at hand when we are at the classroom. Realia, posters, labels, whatever we need to create an environment where they start thinking in English. When they start feeling in English, processing information in English, the teacher's motivation, the teacher needs to be motivated to learn, especially when even starting in your voice tone. If your voice tone is low, you look bored. You look like you're, okay, yeah, we're going to do this again, class, again. They're not going to be motivated. If you being the teacher is bored, imagine your students. Yes, our students are going to get bored if we look bored because everything comes about how excited can you be and what which emotion do you transmit to them i am excited teaching i am excited teaching you this because it's a very beautiful topic that we are going to work today you are going to get excited to know why i am so excited about but imagine if i am look yeah okay we're going to talk about speaking today yes mm -hmm. speaking Will you be excited about this class? Will you wait for the things that I'm going to teach you? No, you're going to be bored. Probably if you want your certificate, you will turn your camera off and walk away until I finish. That's what happens when we teachers don't enjoy what we're doing. We need to enjoy what we're doing for our students to enjoy what they're doing. I love these things. I love how mind works that's why i love re for research for new things and things that i can pass to other colleagues but you need to love what you're doing and you need to be excited and motivated to teach them not only learning also another factor that we need to take to be aware of is the bad habits Students right now, especially after pandemics, they don't have any study habits. They don't know how to study. They don't have a schedule. They don't do homework. They don't do research. They even try to do things the easy way. They use artificial intelligence, GPT chat. They use Google Translator. They use Google Research. So Right now, especially in schools, our students are trying to make things easier for them, but they're forgetting that they need to think. So we need to have some activities that force them to think. If I give you something that easy as, okay, today you're going to research about a celebration. You are going to use Google. You are going to Google celebrations in Peru. You are going to copy and paste. That's all the things that you're going to do. But if I give you all the steps, if I tell you, okay, I want you to tell me this, this, this in your own words with your personal opinion or with whatever you are doing, you are going to be forced to read what you're, go what you're doing. You're going to be forced to sum up what you're doing because you're going to have to explain that to me. So what we need to do is motivate them and challenge them. We need to challenge our students. If we give easy tasks, if we give the same task all the time, they are not going to feel challenged. They are not going to have the need. They are not going to have the need to do something. We need to challenge them to do something. The textbook, 
This is something that goes pro and con. The positive part is that we can use the textbook as a guide because obviously we all teachers work according to, you, to, the, to the European frame, the, ref, the European frame chart. So we know which level are we teaching in each grade of school. So for example, if I am teaching fourth secondary, third secondary, it means that there are a B2, B2 plus, and they are giving the FC exam. So what I need, what uh, grammar do I need, which vocabulary they need to learn, which listening they're, they are going to work, which capacity they need to have, Everything is on the textbook. You are going to go to the front page and you're going to be able to find the syllabus. That's a positive thing because it's going to help us know what they need to know and where do we need to take them. But why is it not as positive as we want to believe? Can someone tell me? Raise your virtual hand. I'm going to choose somebody to tell me why do you think that using a textbook has a negative part. It's not that good as we all want to believe it is. Come on, one virtual hand. I'm going to choose one student. Okay, very good. Thank you. I have the participation in the in the chat. Isn't there context? Yes. Yes, actually, it's very, it's a very big truth because they, in the textbooks, most of the time, that, that is something that it's like being corrected right now, because now we can find things about Peru, we can find things about, there are some textbooks that are actually using information from Peru, from their country, but most of the textbooks talks about London, United States, Australia, and countries that speaks in English. Yes, it's good for them because they have different situations, but it's not as meaningful situation. So I can watch a movie, I can read a book, I can read a text, I can, I can do a lot of things, but, but if I am not going to be able to make a meaningful situation out of this, I am not going to learn because I can't use it in my daily life. Only limited to text information. Yes, when you limit yourself to the text information, they are not going to be able to create meaningful situations and they're not going to be able to use them in their daily life. So they, there is no going to be are really meaningful learning. They are not going to make the knowledge their own. Now we have some contextualized topics. Globalization helps. We can find dialogues for teens according to their interest. Yes, the textbook is a tool and we need to know that the textbook is a very good tool, but it's not my whole class. I can focus my class only in the textbook because it's not going to be good for my students and it's not going to be good for me either because yes, it has games, it has exercises, it has grammar, but they are not creating meaningful situations that are going to help them storage this information. It only encourages very minimal information. Most of the time it does. For example, now I'm working with one for a B2 level. And every time that I have a grammar, I have like two or three grammar tenses in two pages. If I only do that, my students are not going to learn in neither of them because it's too fast. I need to focus on one. I need to make them create sentences. I need to make them create situa situations, explain to me situations. So that's what we need to do. We need to use the textbook as a tool, not as everything at the center of my class is not going to work. We can use a lot of resources from the net, but we have to adapt them. Yes, we need to know how is our population. 
We need to know how our population is. We need to know exactly how our, our students learn, how they focus better. If they like more videos or more listening or more writing, how can I help them to improve the other skills that they are not doing as good as the first one or the second one? We need to know our population so we can adapt this information that we have to them. The levels are very important. Remember that a few years ago, we used to have like the level per grade. First grade, you have book number one. Second grade primary, you had book number two. Third grade primary, you have book number three. What happens if you have a native student in first or second grade and you are teaching him a, a, an A1 level? that it's a beginner, he's going to get bored. What happens if you teach in fourth secondary a CAE preparation exam and you have a student that is new that haven't studied English in his life or her life? She's not going to be able to do what you're trying to do because it's not going to be her level. We need to be clear about this. Students need to have a process, but they need to be in their level that they are going to be comfortable learning. If you are learning English and you are a beginner and I try to teach you a grammar tense as present perfect or past perfect, you are going to get confused. You're not going to know what I'm trying to teach you and you are not going to be able to do what I am asking you to do. Oh, guys, uh, brackets, you have the link of the classroom in the chat, okay? Se los digo en español para que se entienda este sin problema. Tienen el link del classroom en el chat en este momento. Por favor, los, los colegas que aún no se han inscrito al classroom, háganlo en este momento para que puedan acceder al material complementario y a la grabación de las clases también, si es que quieren repasarlas o volver a escucharlas o tenerlas en su computador, ¿ok? Thank you. Okay, let's continue. And the main factor that is creating as teacher a very big, big, big issue teaching English is mother language. Because what do you think that children start talking? Tell me in the chat, what's the average of age for students for young learners for learners to start talking in mother language yes imitation very good two exactly they start repeating imitating okay two years old three years old right that's the average of the age when we start we human beings start talking so we start talking by listening and repeating, exactly. But you want to know a fun fact? At that age, any human being is able to recognize when the sounds don't belong to their mother language. They don't know that you're speaking German. They don't know that you're speaking French. They don't know that you're speaking Spanish or English. They just listen that the sounds that they are getting are not the same as their mother language they can difference but they can't tell which language you're talking yes we have the ability to recognize our mother language so when they start speaking they are all spanish mom speaks in spanish dad speaks in spanish okay what would you like to translate and also a uh, brother, sister, aunt, auntie, speaks in Spanish. And what do they have in this? They have Spanish all around. They live in a Spanish world. So they don't learn, they don't learn that this is a cow, for example. They learn that vaca, moo, vaca. So they relate the word vaca with the picture cow. So this is a vaca, right? 
And what happens when we English teachers come and say when they are six or five years old and cow, no, vaca, cow, no, vaca. They have the language, their mother language here. So it's more difficult at the first steps to make them change these ideas. But what happens if I don't say, what is this? If I come and say, how? And I come speaking in a different language. So they are going to understand, ah, she's not speaking in Spanish. She's not the same as I am used to. She's different. So this is not vaca. This is cow. What we need to make them aware is when we speak in English, we create the environment that they need to learn as they did when they were learning Spanish. But if I talk in Spanish, si yo empiezo a hablarles en español y de pronto les digo cow, pero chicos, miren, miren, un cow, ellos no se encuentran en un ambiente en el cual estén inmersos en otro idioma van a seguir pensando en su idioma natal. Yo necesito crear el ambiente para que ellos entiendan que necesitan cambiar de chip. No es español, no es una vaca, it's a cow. Por eso tenemos que nosotros crear este ambiente. ¿Cómo empieza este ambiente? With us. We are English. All the time we're English. That's what we need to have in mind all the time. Even if you're struggling for your student to understand what you're saying, you need to make them aware. You need to make them aware that, okay, I need to make an effort to speak with her because she's not going to understand Spanish. I need to think in English. That's what we need to do. Okay, now, the importance of teaching is speaking. Teaching speaking skills is important as enables effective communication. You're not going to be able to communicate if you don't speak. Enhances language fluency, fosters critical thinking, promotes social integration and cultural exchange. It's going to let you know new people, different people and empowers individuals to express themselves confid confidently. These skills are essential for success in academic, professional, and personal context. For us to be able to communicate, we need to speak. That's why it's so important. Because it's going to help us integrate what we are learning with other people and use it in meaningful situations so we can learn something, we can truly learn something. Now, what's the what are the steps or the reasons, essential reasons that we need to know of teaching and speaking? For example, we are going to have an effective communication. A speaking is the primary mode of communication in most social, academic, and professional settings. Teaching and speaking skills enable individuals to express through their thoughts, ideas, and emotions clear and effectively. Okay, it allowed us, it allows us to interact and meaningful exchanges with others fostering understanding and building a stronger rela relationships. If we are able to communicate what we want, we are going to be able to create a connection with others. That is something that we need and we need to have very clear. If we are not going to be able to speak, we are not going to be able to use English as a second language. I need to speak, I need to know to let them know what I need. I need to be able to ask some questions. The practical application. A speaking is a practical skill that is used daily in various real life situations. 
By teaching and speaking, individuals can develop the ability to engage in conversations, participate in group discussions, make presentations, negotiate and express, and express themselves confidently in public settings. These skills are crucial for su success in professional environments and personal interactions. For example, practical application, we're going to use it at school, at work, at a meeting, at a date, at a party, wherever we are, we're going to need to speak in English. If we need to speak in English, this is going to be very useful for us speaking. Language fluency. A speaking plays a vital role in language fluency. It allows individuals to develop natural pronunciation, intonation, and rhythm making their language use more authentic and understandable to native speakers. Teaching and speaking helps learners improve their fluency by practicing verbal communication, vocabulary usage, and grammatical structures in context. Why is it important that we are fluent in what we're doing? Because if you are not going to be able to express yourself correctly and you are not going to handle the correct intonation, what you are saying is not going to be likely for the others to understand. We need to respect the punctuation, the commas, the points, the columns, because if not, we are not going to be able to make them understand what we are trying to say. Intonation is very, very important. Critical thinking and problem solving requires individuals to think on their feet, organize their thoughts, and, re and respond effectively. Through speaking activities, learners develop critical thinking skills. This is very important for problem solving too such as analyzing information, evaluating arguments, and formulating coherent responses. These skills are valuable in decision-making, problem-solving, and creative thinking process. So cri critical thinking and problem-solving are very good for our students to be able to solve daily issues in their lives using English, as easy as going to buy a chocolate in the store. And well, we have social integration and cultural exchange that we already said that they are going to be able to connect with other people, with other cultures, with other countries. And it's going to be good for them because they are going to be able to know different things in a side of their country of what they have known their whole lives, right? So facilitate social integrated and cultural exchange by being able to communicate orally individuals can actively engage in conversations with people from different cultural backgrounds exchange ideas and gain insight into different perspectives different cultures it promotes intercultural understanding empathy and appreciation for diversity so now that we have this clear we are going to continue, okay? This is why we need to speak and this is why we need to teach speaking and why is it so important? Because it's going to be like one of the strongest skills when we are teaching English. We talk about the communicative approach. It means that if your student needs to make an effort to speak, it's going to be more likable to, for them to learn reading to learn writing because they are going to be able to produce sentences using speaking and their language, okay? So, what is a speaking? What do you think a speaking is? I am going to give you the link to a Jamboard, okay? And you are going to tell me in a post-it, you are going to create a tiny note or a post-it. You are going to tell me what is your idea? What idea you have of speaking? What a speaking is for you? Okay. Okay, just a minute. I am trying to open it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
you. Okay, I am going to give you the link to the Jamboard and you are going to write a post-it with your idea of speaking, what a speaking is. Okay, the link is on the chat. Okay, Rudy, thank you to pronounce words, sounds about language, very good. Write it in the post-it, come on, join the jump board and make a note, a color note, you can use the color that you want and tell me in your idea, your own words, what speaking is. Okay, now we have the title, what a speaking is. Very good, I have my first note, excellent. A speaking of speech at public, a skill of speech at public. Okay, speaking at public. Communication, very good. What else, come on. Give me your ideas. A speaking is to able to communicate with a person or or a group of people, very good, to express, to communicate, excellent. Come on, give me your ideas. Give a message, to give a message, very good. What else, to produce ideas with our voice, very good, excellent. What else can we say about speaking? I see another page here. Okay, only in page number one, please, okay? Don't go to number two. If not, I'm not going to be able to see all the ideas. Come on, give me your ideas. What is speaking? What is speaking is? To share feelings. Thank you, Kathy. Also in the chat, excellent. To establish communications using the language skills, okay. Give a message, very good, to sound, to sound a language, okay? Speaking is a process of communicating and expressing our ideas to each other. Very good, communication, very good, a way of communication, excellent. Okay, guys, so we can have language speaking. It's all these things that you are saying to create a sound, channel to give a, me a message, to send a message, to a skill to speak in public, to create sounds, to produce ideas with our voices, to express, to communicate, or a speak is the way to express our emotions and ideas through sounds, to represent words. Very good. Excellent. Very good. To express and give a message to others. All of these things that you are saying are true. All of this is a speaking. Because when we speak, we are communicating something. We are giving a message and we are using sounds. And not we use verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Okay, very good. Thank you to express your ideas. Excellent. Very good. Yes. Actually, yes, we express ideas, we send a message when we speak. Look at this. What is a speaking? A speaking is the process of building and sharing meaning thoughts to use of the use of verbal and non-verbal symbols in a vi variety of contexts. That's the meaning that Cheney gave it to it at 1998. The process of building, sharing meanings through the use of verbal and non-verbal symbols. Yes, that's speaking. Send a message. What skills we are going to have? What skills are we going to find in speaking? Fluency. 
And with fluency, we have the intonation. And this is very important. As I said, if you're not going to be able to let yourself understand, your students are not going to be able to learn what you're trying to say. For example, in my case, I know that I speak fast. And I speak faster in Spanish. Yes, I can do that. It's like a, a superpower. But when I am trying to teach English, I know that I need to low my speed to talk to them. If not, they're not going to be able to understand. With you, for example, is different because most of you are teachers. But our students are learning language. So we need to slow down, try to speak slow, to pronounce our pronunciation needs to be very good and clear and use very mimics with our mouth so they know how they are going to pronounce the words that we are trying to teach them. For example, today one of my students was asking, Miss, how do I say atravesar? I was like, okay, you go through. And he was like, through? No, honey. I use your tongue near your teeth, through. And he started repeating after me, his fourth secondary, and he was like, through. And the, the same is when I am thinking, right? I was like, yeah, the same is when you're thinking. You use the same pronunciation, you use the same mimic with your mouth. And he was like, oh, miss, thank you. Pronunciation is very important, even if we think that is something that is not going to be like a big deal. Yes, it is. Because it is a big deal if I say three or if I say three. I am going to be calling for a plant in one and I am going to be calling for a number in the other. So it is important. Pronunciation is important. And we need to have very, we need to be very careful with this. We need to be very aware of how our students are pronunciating the words that we are teaching them. If we are teaching numbers, we can't allow them to say three, number three. No, there is not a number three. There is a number three. And we need to be aware of it. But for that, we need to prepare our class. Because if not, if we go and we don't know what we're going to do, we're not going to be able to teach something that we don't know. You can know how to speak in English, but maybe you don't remember what a phrasal verb is. And it happens. You use phrasal verbs all the time, but did you know that their name was phrasal verbs? I didn't remember, for example. So vocabulary. If you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know the name of what you're talking about, you're not going to be able to use it. We need to give them the vocabulary and it's better if you give them the vocabulary before the task, before the speaking task. You need to give them the vocabulary and the grammar that they are going to work so they know what they're going to use and what do you want them to do with it. But they need to have the vocabulary. There are a lot of words that they don't know. There are a lot of words that actually we don't know. I use a dictionary a lot. Most of the time, I am trying to look for words that are new for me. For example, the other day was, I, I was uh, in IFC preparation mock. Uh, okay, it went away, but it was a word, a formal word that I didn't know. So I took my phone, dictionary. Okay, now I know what it is. Because we learn vocabulary. In Spanish, we learn vocabulary too. We learn vocabulary in Spanish every day. So we need to make them aware of this and we need to make them try to look for the things, to want to know more words, the grammar. They need to know if they are going to tell you what they did on their vacation, they need to know that they need to use past tense because it's, if not, most of them are going to use present tense or are going to use future tense and they are telling you their past holiday, their past vacation vacation. They need to know what grammar tense they are going to use. You need to give them example. You, you need to give them examples of what you want them to do. Irma says, I have a question. If 
Is fluency similar to flow? Fluency is something that comes easily out of you. For example, when you speak, if you speak fluent, that's fluency because comes natural on you and the natural way of speaking. To flow is to go with something. Sometimes you go with, the, you flow with the energy, you flow with the world, you go with something. Fluency is something that comes out of you in a natural way. That's the difference. And as I said, the pronunciation. With the pronunciation, we have the intonation. Remember that we need to be very aware of the punctuation. If I have a comma, if I have a point, if I have a colon, if I have something, I need to respect that in case that I need to number things or else, if not, my students, my colleagues or everyone around me are not going to understand what I'm saying because I go fast and no intonation. So this is, these four speaking skills are very important, very important. Now, meaning and context. We need to give them the meaning of what we're doing and the context, how or where are they going to do it? You don't speak the same in your house as in your work, as in your school, as in your, as in the mall, as, I don't know. You don't write a mail to your boss the same as you write a mail to your mom. You don't write a WhatsApp to your boss as the same you write to your sister or to your brother. Imagine, to your boss. Habla, buenos días, ¿cómo estás? ¿Todo bien? We don't speak like that in our job. So, in meanings, we are going to give them what we want them to say. For example, feelings. Today, you are angry because uh, you had a problem in your, in, with, the, uh, with the internet and you are going to write a letter to Claro to complain, for example. Or an opinion. What do you think about the last Transformers movie? Because it was made in Peru and there was a Cusco City, Inti Raimi. What do you think? In your opinion, the movie was good or not? Personal details. Tell me about your last holiday. Tell me what you ate yesterday. Or tell me, I don't know, uh, how do you feel in your school? How do you feel learning English? Giving advice. For this, for example, if you are going to teach them to give advice, you need to teach them the grammar of should and shouldn't, would and wouldn't. If they don't know that they need to use should and shouldn't, they're not going to be able to give an advice. Expressing hope, telling stories, daily routines, daily routines, present tense. If you don't let them know that they are going to use present tense, they are mostly of them, most of them are going to like confuse it with continuous. And they are going to tell you that they are, they are doing something, not as a habit, as a present action. That's why we need to give them the grammar, the tenses, describing people, phrase, places, objects, habits. In the context, they are going to do it in a formal way. You are complaining in a formal letter. Informal, you are writing a letter to your mom. At home, at school, in the street, on a holiday, at a mall, in your vacation. Okay, we need to have this clear for them to have this clear. When we ask for a task, we need to be clear of what we want them to do. For example, if I am going to ask for a role play, I need to give them the context. I need to give them the meaning. You are selling a TV. You want to buy a TV, but you don't like that TV because it's too expensive. So the buyer knows that he doesn't want to buy. The seller knows that he needs to convince him. 
So it's easy for them to get into the character if they know what the context of it is. Now, do you know what? Many language learners regard speaking ability as the measure of knowing a language. Okay, they think that if they know more grammar, if they know more about the language, they are going to have the speaking ability and is not related. Not necessarily you are going, if you know more, you are going to be able to speak more. Again, if you can't use that information into a meaningful situation, you are not going to be able to do it. They regard speaking as the most important skill they can acquire and they assess their, process, their progress in terms of their accomplishments in, in a spoken communication. Most of them are going to think that they know better if they're going to be able to speak. Now, how this is going to help us teachers? because this is going to make them aware of the goals that they are achieving and they are going to be motivated. If they are motivated, if they are motivated, they are going to want to learn more. That's how we are going to try to motivate them because if they speak, they are going to be more comfortable. They are going to trust more in their skills. So they are going to, they are going to want to learn more. They are going to be more motivated because they feel that they are achieving something. I can say hello. I can introduce myself. I can tell you what my daily routine is. I am getting somewhere. So this is important. And we need to celebrate with them this. Yes, you did it. You introduce yourselves. Good. Now, the main issues that we can have teaching speaking. The first part, despite its importance for many years, teaching speaking has been undervaluated. Most of classes 10 years ago five years ago, were teacher talking time. We give the information, they listen, they search, they memorize. Right now, it's been proved that we need to have less teacher talking time and more student talking time. And we teachers need to step back and watch and listen and give feedback on time. We need to give them the feedback in the moment. If not, they're going to forget what they were saying. They're going to forget what was happening or what was the situation or the context that they were in when they made the mistake. And we need to focus that every mistake is positive. It's the start of knowing the truth about something. Second part. English language teachers have continued to teach speaking just as repetition of drills or memorization of dialogues. As I said, five years ago, 10 years ago, we used to use memory as a helper on speaking. But memory is imitation, it's not their own speaking. I can memorize German, but I don't know how to speak German. I can memorize Quechua, but I don't know how to speak Quechua yet. I can memorize French, but I don't know what I'm saying. I am just going to say it as a parrot. I am going to repeat. That's why we need them to create. When we repeat things, yes, it is important because it's going to help us with the pronunciation. It's going to help us with the fluency. But if we really want them to learn something, we need them to make something. We need them to create something, to have a meaningful situation out of the information that we are giving. We are just a tool. They are like the main character of their own show because they are learning. So another thing, other issues that we can find on teaching English, especially speaking, no interaction. 
at the street, at the store, in your house, people is not talking to you in English. They speak to you in Spanish. No information exchange is not easy for them. Most of the time, it's not easy for them to find people that is like in the mood of speaking in English unless they are at the school or at the institute. Even in your work, if you're not an English teacher, it's not easy for other people to speak to you in English. For example, in my case, I speak with my group, my team, because we are all English teachers. But if I talk to other teachers of math, science, or whatever, they speak in Spanish and I have to speak Spanish. So it's not that I speak in English the whole day. I try to because I like to practice. But the thing is that if I do not force the situation, most people speak to me in Spanish. It's natural. Our mother language is Spanish. No transactions. We can't buy things in English. We can get change in English. We can't buy tickets in English. When we go to the airport, we speak Spanish. No negotiation again. So we don't have a lot of opportunities outside of our school or outside of our environment to speak in English, unless that we are in our English class. And we have like, what, six hours, eight hours, 10 hours top of English at the week. It's not a long, it's not a lot of time. Because they have eight hours daily. They have 40 hours of classes a week and only 10 are in English. All the others are in Spanish. 10 against 30 hours of Spanish. That's something that we need to struggle a lot, a lot. While speaking, we expect our students to be able to. What do we expect our students to be able to do? To produce the English speech sounds and sound patterns. Correct intonation, pronunciation. Use words and sentence stress, intonation patterns, and the rhythm of the second language. We need to have this clear. They need to know the correct pronunciation of the words. And that's where we give the feedback. If some a student comes and, and tell you, Miss, I have three pencils. Yes, honey, you have three pencils. And make them repeat the correct pronunciation. Also, select appropriate words and sentences according to the proper social setting, audience, situation, and subject matter. Why do we need to have the proper setting? Because if you are going to buy to the store, I need to make you aware of, of this so you know what to do. If you are going to the hospital, you need to be aware that you're going to a hospital to know what to do. Organize their, so their thoughts in a meaningful and logical sequence. We need to work with coherence and cohesive. It needs to have a context and a meaning. Use language as a means of expressing values and judgments. They need to know that this is a tool for them to connect to people, with us, with their, with their classmates, with other teachers. Use the language quickly and confidently with few unnatural pauses. And this happens a lot, which is called as fluency. This happens a lot. When you're starting speaking, you used to have pauses, a lot of them, like uh, my... My, my name is, so you can tell when someone is starting to speak, but we need, the, we need them to be fluent in the language. So we need to continue practicing for them to get this natural. It needs to come as Spanish. When, when nosotros hablamos en español, sale nomás, no hacemos pausas. Y hasta cuando pensamos, estamos pensando y estamos hablando. In English, we need to do the same thing. We need to start making the conversation so natural that you don't get realized that there is not that they are not talking in their mother language. Of course, you are going to be aware of it because of the accent. We can't imitate a perfect accent, but we can have a very good one, very close to native. 
Está bien, Karim, no te preocupes. I will wait for you. Okay. The first activity that we're going to have today. How do we teach speaking? Okay. A sample of a speaking activity. You are going to write in the chat a sample of a speaking activity that you can think right now. Okay. You need to give me the tense that is going to be present tense and the and what activity do you think will be good for teaching a speaking in present tense use the chat to give me an activity using present tense come on likes and dislikes very good excellent rudy excellent very good yes and we can use food it's very easy for us to make them aware of what they like and they don't like using food. Daily routines, very good, Delia. Thank you so much. They can tell us about their day. Talk about their daily routine. Make a song, hobbies, very good. Daily routines, excellent, very good. Habits, excellent, very good, yay. Yes, we can make them tell us their daily life. Jobs, personal information, introducing themselves. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much for your participation. Yes. We can make them tell us things that they do in their, their daily lives. Real facts, introducing your classmates. Very good. Those are activities that are going to help us use present tense. And they are going to be aware that they're using a tense that is not something that they're doing in that moment. News reporter conversation, interviews, very good. Past experience, we're using, yeah, but we're using present tense. Remember, likes and dislikes. Describe or talk about your school life, very good. Meaningful situations, real situations. So when we teach an activity, we need to give them the meaning and the function. What are you going to do? The context that they are going to do it and why they're going to do it. Okay, the context and the materials. What are they going to need to do this? Describe or talk about your school life. Yes, very good. Now, communicative approach. As we said, the best way that we have for teaching English is speaking. And they are going to be more comfortable learning if they try or start speaking. What is the weather like? Yes, very good, Nancy. Thank you. Teachers have to provide authentic practice that prepare students for real life communication situations. As I said, it doesn't matter if I teach you how to buy a chocolate if you're not going to be able to buy it. Practice is speaking in class. They have to help their students develop their ability to produce grammatically correct, logically connected sentences that are appropriate to a specific contest and to do so using acceptable, that is comprehensible pronunciation. Okay, again, our pronunciation is not going to be perfect because we are not native, but we can have a very good pronunciation, a very good intonation, very close to native speakers being an ESL learner. Now, what do we need to teach to have a good speaking class? We need to teach vocabulary. We need to teach grammar. We need to teach pronunciation and intonation. And then everything they need to speak confidently and fluently. It means that we need to create an environment where they trust they can make mistakes. Okay. Provide real life situations. Teachers should create a classroom environment where students have real life communication, authentic activities, and meaningful tasks that promote oral language. This can occur when students collaborate in groups to achieve a goal or to complete a task. Exactly. 
The learners shouldn't be worried about the accent, but to be understood exactly. They need to know that they are not going to speak as natives, but they can improve their pronunciation and their intonation. Yes, they can. But we need to have this clear. We can be the best in our capacity. So let's make them try their best in their capacity. Okay. Pronunciation, how to teach pronunciation. This is actually that it's very important. As I said, we teachers are the role models in the class. They are going to imitate us because they think that they know that we are giving them the information that they need. So first, Pronunciation is learned through imitation. They are going to repeat what we're saying. They are going to move their mouth as we are doing. That's why we need to move our mouth to pronounce correctly for them to be able to repeat what they're doing, what we are doing. Do you remember when we were in pandemics and we returned to face-to-face -face classes and we were using masks? Now, who can tell me if it was easy for you to teach pronunciation with your mouth cover? I read you in the chat. Tell me your stories because mine was awful. I was teaching first grade primary and I wasn't able to make them the mimics for them to repeat what I was trying to say. And they couldn't repeat because they weren't seeing my mouth. Yes, not at all. It was awful. Actually, I must say that one or two times I just pull it down and it was like, go away and put it back because it was impossible for me to make them repeat something because they weren't able to, to watch me do it, to see my mouth, not good at all. Yeah, it was awful. So why is that? Because they imitate. They couldn't see our mouth. Yes they couldn't imitate what we were doing with our mouth. They were just listening a sound and no idea how to do that sound. It was awful. So even, even a lower voice, yes, and we had a lower voice. So most of us were end up were, uh, using these mics that were like speakers. Now I keep using it because it makes me like raise my voice, my voice less, but yes. I, I pull it down sometimes because it was impossible for me to make them repeat something because they weren't able to see what to do. So when we teach pronunciation, we need to be very forced. We need to force our the ways of our mouth for them to repeat what we, so they know what to do. If we don't pronunciate the words good, they are not going to be able to imitate what we're, what we're doing. Okay, therefore the teachers sh should be a role model in pronunciation. Teacher should be well-versed in stress, rhythm and intonation practically, yes. We need to improve our pronunciation for them to be able to do, to have a good pronunciation. If not, they're not going to be able to do it. And that's why we teachers need to practice and need to speak. And that's why it's very, um, it's a good advice for you teachers to speak in English in your English team, because it's going to give you fluency. You know, that's something that I always say. El inglés es bien ingrato. Cuando tú dejas de practicarlo, dejas de hablarlo, te abandona. Pierdes vocabulario, pierdes fluidez. And that's the truth. You can be a C2 certificate, but when you want to speak after a long time of not speaking, you forget the words. You are thinking like, Ay, what was this? What was the word? Ay, what was the word? Because you forget, you lose your fluency. That's why we English teachers need to help each other and talk in English between each other so we can start getting fluency. It doesn't matter if you teach first primary or first secondary or, or fifth secondary. Actually, fifth secondary is going to be more likely to, pr to practice their English than first primary, because in first primary, you need to use very short sentences, very short commands, because they are learning, they're beginners. 
but so but within us we can help each other with our fluency with our vocabulary we can practice teacher should have the ability to compare the mother language of the learners with the sound of english okay the teacher needs to be aware when they are using a Spanish accent, for example, for example, it's not an example. So we need to identify when they're using a Spanish accent to make them know, again, example. Example, no honey, sample. Repeat after me, imitate, okay? The style of ELT should be natural. It means that it needs to be like a conversation, like when you're speaking in Spanish, not forced, no rough. Your voice tone, your gesture, as you were speaking in Spanish. Hey, I. Oh, sorry, Katy, but you're back. Don't worry. The speak of the teacher's pronunciation should be moderate. Remember that I told you that sometimes we speak fast. And as I said, in my case, I speak really fast. In Spanish, I can speak faster. So when I am teaching, I need to know that so I can slow down a little bit so my students are able to understand what I'm saying. The best pronunciation I have and if I slow down my speed a little bit, they're going to be able to understand better what I'm saying. If I am speaking to them, like I'm speaking to you right now, most of them, if they are beginners, are going to stay in the middle of the conversation and they're not going to finish with information. They're not going to be able to understand what I'm saying. Yes, that's the truth. Embrace accents. Many students feel shy about their accents, which prevents them from speaking to pronunciate bad. They are shy because they think they are going to have a bad pronunciation. So that many English learners will retain some sort of accent, no matter how much they practice or how much they expose themselves to English, their accent might even change over their lifetime. Even native speakers have regional accents. That was, that's what we were saying. And our friend, where are you? Here you are, Leonor told us, the learners shouldn't be worried about their accent because even English speakers have an accent if they live in different regions. So if the accent does not prevent your students from being understood, make a point of embracing it in your classroom. An accent is what makes a student unique, okay? If you want to support your students in embracing their accent and need some statistics to back you up, you can check the videos that British Council has in their in their page and that you can show them different accents that are more marked than ours so they know that you can speak very good english having a natural accent that's what i meant when i say we are not going to speak as natives we are you can be a c2 you can be proficient in english but your pronunciation is going to be Latina, because we learn Spanish first, and it's not a bad thing. It's natural on us. Teaching English of students of different levels. We can't sort students because of their age. We can't sort students because of their grades. We can't sort students because, I don't know, their gender. But we need to sort the students because of their level. We need to have the beginners together so they have the environment where they feel comfortable learning. We need to have intermediate so they can keep growing because their process is 
ahead of the others and the advanced to be challenged between each other so they can continue learning. If I just mix beginners with advanced people, advanced is not going to learn and beginners are going to get confused. So I need to have clear which level my students are. One size doesn't fit all. Nowhere is this more true than in the classroom. Your students likely arrive with various pre-requires and initial English levels. They come from different backgrounds and have varying degrees of exposure to English. Luckily, you can use various strategies and exercises to teach speaking to students of different levels, which can be easily combined in heterogeneous classrooms, okay? For example, if I want to talk, if I want to work with beginners, Getting beginners to speak is often not too difficult. Simple exercises, repeating phrases and dialogues are keys. However, what if, what if you want your learners to produce English, not merely verbally, fill in the blanks or read our sentences from a textbook. Focus on getting a message across. At this stage, is there in their learning, the vocabulary and grammar knowledge of your student is still quite limited. But that doesn't mean that they can't communicate. Give your students real life scenarios, introducing themselves, going shopping, and let them role play using verbal and non-verbal communication with a focus on communicating and delivering a message, not correctness. Let them make liberal use of visual aids. They might be surprised how much they can communicate with a few words. What well, this means that we need to give our students the opportunity to express the message that they want, not worrying if it's correct or not. In beginners, we want them to get comfortable with the speaking. We can guide this. We can start with the guided work, then we can give them the example and then they have the free practice, but they have an example to follow. Intermediate. Practicing speaking with intermediate learners can be difficult. At this stage, students are often aware of their mistakes and perceiving shortcomings and might feel shy or inhibited. Much like when teaching, when teaching beginner students, the goal should be on getting a message across, not again correctness. We need the message to go through. A, communicate, a communication situation is successful if all parties understand each other, know if, know if they speak with perfect grammar and pronunciation. Help your students let go of the idea of perfection. Mistakes are the first steps for evolution. Encourage your students to use the varied vocabulary instead of simple words like good, bad, or very. Ensure that they challenge themselves and use appropriate synonyms, okay? This is intermediate. We need to get them loose out of the perfect way and just try to speak as they can. Advanced, this is different. Teaching advanced students is both regarding and challenging. At this level, students usually have a good command over vocabulary and grammar issues. Expanding the topic you can discuss in your classroom as well as the complex complexity of the material. Debate clubs, role plays, and even creating short films or podcasts are very ways to teach speaking at this level, okay? Yes, they can create po podcasts and they love doing this. The second activity that we're going to do today, in the chat, you are going to write to me what do students need to talk fluently. Give me in the chat five reasons that you think students need to talk fluently. Come on, I read you. What do students need to talk 
fluently. What do you think your students need to be fluent? Come on. I will write the question. in the chat. What do students need to talk fluently? What do you think your students need to be fluent? Feel motivated, confident, get context and vocabulary. Thank you, Delia, Consuelo, practice and intonation. Thank you so much. What else? Come on, guys, we're 62 in the room. Listen and watching cartoons in English. Yes, it's going to help a lot. Tips para saber pronunciar palabras. Excellent, Kathy. Very good. Yes, that's a very good way of teaching them. We need to guide their learning. What else? Come on. We're 62 here. I only have five comments. To introduce themselves, to express their likes and dislikes, to express their opinions. Very good. They need to, they need to practice at any time, but be surrounded of English. Yes, respectful environment. Very good, Joy. It's very important to feel confident. Very good. Thank you. Practice conversation, drills, motivation, and the need to be understood. Good, Karin. Practice intonation and stress. Yes, very important. Sometimes we don't give the correct importance to this, but it is needed. Adelina, talk to native speakers. Very good. Practice the pronunciation and learn more vocabulary. Good, dancer. Use movie clips to learn pronounce better videos and music be understandable feel confident feel motivated to have real conversations good to be part of a community yes it helps a lot look look at the mirror when they talk yeah actually that's a very good thing to do because they are going to be able to see their mouth practice conversations and vocabulary songs excellent thank you yes Practice their English with things they like, music, games, and videos. Very good. Yes. All of these things are going to help our students to improve their intonation, to, to improve their, their pronunciation, so they're going to be more fluent in the language. Very good. Very important. And we need to be aware of this. Correction. Immediate correction during control and guided activities we want them to produce correct language when learners are work, working on free oral activities expressing what they want to say or expressing themselves and their own personality correct should be done later in class but we need to give them the feedback because if not they are not going to be aware that they made a mistake and they are going to continue doing it to record their speech, to verify their turn strengths, etc. Very good, yes. Feedback is very important and feedback needs to be done on time. Okay, now we are like with a little time. So if we have time, we're going to do this one, okay? But let's continue. If not, we're not, we're not going to finish. Activities that we can use to develop speaking. Discussions. The student may aim to a conclusion, share ideas to of find a solution or find a solution. Role plays or simulations. The teacher gives information to the learners about how to act or feel. Brainstorming. In given topics, students produce ideas. A storytelling. Students can briefly summarize the story they have heard. Okay, now. Practice our vocabulary and try to listen every word. Very good. Thank you, Diana. Yes. Another activities that we can use some interviews, songs, give your opinions or ideas, your dreams of, um, or ambitions. I'm sorry. <laughs> Reporting. Okay. As they were reporters. Visual comprehension, problem solving, story completion. Rhyme, sound twister, and picture describing. These are very good activities that are going to let us develop speaking skills. Karaoke, yes, very good, Mariluz. Yes, karaoke is very good for them too. Okay, another speaking activities to first, for example, for intermediate students. Introduce yourself and your best friends. Describe, introduce countries. 
locate places, talk about families, interview, interviewing, reporting, acting out a dialogue, everyday English, expressing likes, pronunciation, describing a house, using the map to give directions, giving instructions, a food recipe, taking about talking about seasons, reasoning, what a visitor can see in your city, talking about your actions, com completing a story. Story completion is very good too for them. So before we go to the other task, we are going to watch a video okay and you are going to give me your opinion about if you think what is the best way what is the best way of teaching english okay so let's see here it is let's see I am not going to use the full video because it's very long, but let's try to see the main part, okay? I will upload this video to the classroom so you are going to be able to watch to watch the full video after we finish the class, okay? But right now we're going on, we are only going to see a part of it. Paréntesis un ratito, colegas, por si acaso el link de la asistencia ya está en el chat para que puedan ir reportando su asistencia. Ya saben que cumplir con las asignaciones del Classroom, aparte de la asistencia, son bastante importantes para que puedan recibir su certificado. Ok, let's continue. So, let's take a look at some of that, that great student talking time. If you're not aware, we're going to go... Okay. So this is Chris from Language House. Uh, we're a four-week TEFL course in Prague, if you're not aware. We're gonna go over specifically today some tips on how to create good activations, uh, but overall how to increase your student talking time. Uh, a lot of people write to me or maybe they've seen a video of mine and they're always kind of amazed. Like, how do you get that great student talking time? How come your students are participating a lot? Whenever I try to do um, activities or role plays, it always falls flat. And so I'm going to go over some tips on things that I do to increase that student talking time, to increase participation, and to make your speaking activities way more productive and useful. So first of all, activations are what we use at the Language House. Um, basically, this is going to be speaking activities that have specific target language. So maybe a grammar point or a Lexis that you've taught and you want your students to use. But um, these tips can be used for any type of speaking activity that you want to do. So let's take a look at some of the main points and then what you want to have in the actual lesson itself. So the main point is, is if, um, if you're teaching a specific grammar point or a combination of Lexus and a grammar point, you want to make sure that your language has been trained. A lot of times what teachers do is they don't really effectively train their specific language and then when they get to their role play, the students aren't comfortable with it. So they end up not being able to use it correctly or they're a little bit shy. And I mean, that, that's one of the main things. So make sure that you've had a clear study one, a clear study two, we'll probably have another video on those. So that by the time you get to your role play, your discussion, your debate, your, your presentation, they feel comfortable with the new language. Um, next is you're going to want to have a clear context. So a lot of times what teachers will do is they'll say, these students talk to these students, that's not good enough. If you want engaging, solid speaking activities, definitely put them in a specific context. So a setting. So for example, put them in a doctor's office, uh, put them in a restaurant ordering food, put them at a car dealership buying a specific car, put them on the street asking for directions. Obviously we're not talking literally put them in these places, but for the role play, for the debate, put them in this specific setting. And the main reason for this is that it makes the activity way more engaging and it also brings out a lot of this natural language that we'll talk about in a second. So by putting students in these locations figuratively, uh, they'll naturally begin to use language that's appropriate for those situations. The next thing that you wanna do is to have a clear task. And this is what where most teachers fail. 
Uh, what I mean by this is that if I just tell two students to role play, they're not really going to do anything. They're not going to know what to talk about or how to get all that language out. I mean, for example. Okay, guys, they gave us some ideas about what do we need to, to do to increase our students, our student talking time so they feel comfortable on talking to us, okay? So now that we have seen this and we have some ideas, I am going to go back to what I said, to what I show here. Give me activities that promote speaking you're only going to write three okay you are going to write three in the chat three activities that you think and you have heard that are going to help us increase our or promote our speaking or a student speaking time come on role plays sing a song role plays very good excellent Debates, motivating, creating opportunities for informal conversations, karaoke time, expositions, very good, all presentations, great, conversations, interviews, excellent. Role play, songs, presentation, storytelling, project, very good, Milagros, we forgot about the projects, speak and role plays, very good, speech, giving news, excellent, very good, guys, news, very good songs, projects, games, all of the above. <laughs> Thank you, Karin. Yes, of course, I know. Simulations, expositions, presentations. Excellent, very good, yes. So guys, to sum up, to finish what we're going to do today, say the weather, debate or defender positions. Debate is a very, very good speaking exercise. Opinions, gaps, fill in the blanks, complete things. So to finish, Provide maximum opportunity to students to speak. We need to give them a student speaking time. Reduce teacher speaking time and increase a student speaking time. A step back and observe your students. Indicate positive signs when commenting a student's response. Act elicit, eliciting questions as, what do you mean about this? How do you read that conclusion? That is going to force your student to explain how they got into this information, how they got into this conclusion, okay? We need to have eliciting questions, okay? Now, we're going to finish with the last part of the video, okay? And please, if you have any questions here, you can find my social network and you can write to me over there so I can explain or answer some of your questions, okay? So we are going to finish with the video. And also remember for today, you have in your classroom, the video that we saw here and the task for today is that you need to make a comment about how do you promote in your classroom the speaking, okay? What activities you use in your classroom for a speaking task. That's going to be the task for today. You are going to make a comment on the video that I am uploading. We are going to watch another part of it, but you need to watch it completely, okay? Because it's like 15 minutes. So let's finish with this for today. For example, if I'm like, you're a customer, you're a server, a role play, what are they supposed to talk, talk about? Um, so what we wanna do with this is really think about specific components that go into the speaking activity that students have to hit to bring out all of the language that you've taught. Uh, let's do a couple examples. So case in point, I could do a lesson where we're, we've taught a bunch of language related to going to, to the movie. So different genres of films, uh, words like the director, producer, stars, uh, movie, theater, ticket, etc. Now, if I just say role play, you're at the movies, students aren't going to be able to do anything. It's, it's not going to make much sense for them. So instead, have a clear task. That could be what movie do you want to see? Maybe some of the students want to see a horror movie, some of the other students want to see a comedy. 
when would you like to see the specific movie? What time? Is it a matinee or is, is it an evening showing? Where do they want to sit? Do they want to sit, sit in the front row or the back row? You know, so if you have all of those things set up, you'll naturally get all of this extra language because the students have to hit these specific points. Um, let's go through another example. You might do an activation or a role play where people are going to go into the doctor. And if I just say role play, they're not going to be able to talk about anything. So instead, really hit specific points that they have to do. So the patient would have to talk about the various different symptoms, um, how long they've been affected by this. The, the doctor would have to give some sort of a diagnose, offer some sort of a medication or treatment, you know, etc. So it might be something like planning the perfect holiday. If I just say plan the per perfect holiday, students aren't going to be able to do much. But if I say where are you going to go, who are you going to be staying with, what type of hotel do you want to book, uh, what are three attractions that you want to see, if I have these categories boarded up, then students have something to talk about. So again, clear tasks, super important. Think about what you want your students to be saying, task that out for them, and things will be great. Okay. So, with this, as I said, I am going to uh, add the link of this video so you can watch the complete video and you can understand a little better what they want us to, to know about the speaking task. And to finish for today, the last task, we are going to do you remember that we had our Padlet? Today, we're going to have a new line in the same Padlet that we have been working. We are going to have lesson one, and now we go to lesson two, okay? We have teaching and speaking. I am going to give you the link of the Padlet, and you are going to tell me today how do you think is the best way to teach speaking? How do you think is the best way to teach speaking? Now, we have our comments of lesson one. Today, we are going to have our comments on of lesson two. And we are going to finish three and four in the next classes, okay? So I am giving you right now the link to the Padlet so you can add your comments of why, how do you think is the best way of teaching and speaking in your classroom? And with that, that's all for today. And you can say goodbye, okay? Remember that your comment needs to be in lesson teaching and speaking number two. You are writing it in number one. Exactly. Thank you. Speaking as much as, much as possible. Very good. Speaking, show videos and podcasts, encourage conversation. Very good. Excellent. Don't forget to fill your attendance, please. The attendance form, the link was also on the chat. So don't forget to fill in your attendance, okay? Show some videos, encourage conversation, make it fun through games. Very good. Yes, games are very important. What else? Talking about students' interests such as sports. Very good. Role playing. Excellent. Very good. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Don't forget to put your comments in the Padlet because it's part of the activities. 
And don't forget to finish your activities. Tomorrow morning, they will be uploaded in your classroom, okay? Thank you so much. And I will see you next Tuesday in the same channel. Thank you. I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you so much. Don't forget, please, to buy. Thank you. Yeah, don't forget, please, that you need to fill your attendance. See you around. Thank you, Angela. Thanks. See you. Goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me today. Excellent. Nice seeing you. Nice talking. Thank you, Daniel. You too. Bye, teacher. See you next class. Thank you, Delia. See you next class. See you next Tuesday. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.